Ed has been itching and scratching up a storm this summer. The problem could be a skin infection. The question is, what's the best way to treat it? With us now is Dr. Eric Cryan. He's a, you know, is it Cryan or Cryer? Cryan. Cryan, thank you. I, I, I had Cryer in my mind for some reason. <laughs> He's a veterinarian at the McLean Animal Hospital. Thank you very much for being with us. And you brought this cutie. Who's this? This is Bliss. <laughs> this is my uh, new dog. She actually uh, was in the CNI dog program and got uh, kicked out for uh, some skin allergies. So I thought it was appropriate to bring her on today. Skin allergies you know I'm so glad you're here because my, I have a lab named Bailey mm -hmm. who he scratches so much at night we actually take his collar off so mm -hmm. the jingling of his tags doesn't keep us keep up. What, up what yeah. is that what what is going on are they having like a rash of skin infection yeah certainly yeah during the summer months you know a moist you know wet warm environment a lot of dogs can exasperate underlying allergies and things like that and they can get skin allergies so what you want to look for is when they have like red pimple looking things, you know, right. crust, scabs, things like that are signs of a skin infection. And typically, you know, after you see that, you want to bring them to your veterinarian and have them treated with appropriate course of medications. Now, would you see this rash on their bellies or what about their elbows and things yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, typically, yeah. You want to look, you know, a lot of times uh, commonly in their abdomen on their belly, you know, by their uh, tail, uh, underneath their armpits and things like that. And so those are the typical areas you want to look for, you know, and so kind of red areas, losses of hair, you know, areas that they're scratching a lot are signs that, uh, you know, your dog likely has a skin infection you should bring them to the vet to have them take a look. What's the best way to treat that? There's many ways that you can treat it. Uh, a lot of times it's secondary to you know, either a bacterial infection or a yeast infection. If it's a bacterial infection, typically it's antibiotics. You can put on oral uh, medications. Uh, there's a new medication called uh, Comenia that you can give an injection. So that can kind of give two weeks of antibiotic treatment. So for people who are uh, busy and have a hard time giving the pills and, you know, uh, you know, how hard animals are difficult to medicate, that's a good uh, way to treat it. Now, do cats get this as well? Yes, they oftentimes, you know, will get it secondary to, uh, you know, if they're going outside, you know, fights with other cats and things like that, but they can have allergies as well that can cause, you know, secondary skin infections. Now, you know, dogs, I know mine does it, will occasionally get on the furniture, like it or not. Can people get get this from their pets? Typically not. The average skin infection for a dog is not something that can be transmitted to people. A lot of times it's secondary to an underlying condition, be it, uh, you know, you know, parasites or fleas or allergies, or if, you know, a lot of times during the summer months, if they, you know, are going swimming and they're not dried properly, they can get a secondary infection or an ear infection, you know, from, again, from like a moist, wet, damp environment that causes, you know, their, their skin to, you know, cause these problems. Is there any way to prevent it? Yeah, there's a lot of things to do. You know, if your dog goes swimming, you know, you want to make sure that you, uh, you know, dry them very thoroughly using a medicated shampoo that uh, has uh, things like uh, chlorhexaderm or ketoconazole to kind of kill the bacteria and yeast on them is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, giving them fish oil supplements I like to do, uh, cod liver oil, stuff that has like omega-3 fatty acids, a lot of times kind of helps ameliorate uh, skin issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, you know, I know my vet talks about a lot about that, just mm -hmm. sticking a couple of those um, fatty oil tablets in with their... Um with their meal. Absolutely. It's good for us. It's it's good for the dogs as well. I, I have her on that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, what about allergies? Because I know even my coworkers are sneezing and my dog will sometimes sneeze 16 times in a row. Yeah. Cause, could he have allergies too? Uh, typically, you know, they, they can can't inhale allergies and be sneezing, but a lot of times, you know, un unlike us with the sneezing, the allergies manifest itself in, in their skin. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they can be allergies to, you know, everything that we can as well as far as grasses, molds. I've had dogs that are have, uh, allergic to human, uh, you know, skin, human dander, like we're allergic to them. Uh -huh. And a lot of times, so, you know, you want to try to find the underlying cause, be it food, be it, uh, you know, environmental and uh, take the appropriate act and try to treat it. He's on the trail of all the bunnies on our trail. That's probably why he gets it. Yeah, all probably. The time. <laughs> Thank you much, Dr. Crying, for being with us. You're we very really welcome. Good to see you again. It. Good luck. And Bliss is beautiful. You yeah. got a good one, huh? Yeah, yep. Uh, she's been with me a couple months. I'm very Aww. happy to have her. All puppy, puppy action there. Thank yep. you very much. You're very welcome. When we come back, we'll check in with Wall Street and uh, Howard will have the seven-day forecast straight ahead.